Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another Royal News video. So, as promised, this video is all about freeing Harry. And no better time could happen for Harry to be free than his upcoming 40th birthday. Now, we've been having lots of stories come out how Harry is due to inherit his final millions from trust funds when he hits 40 and you can imagine Meghan rubbing her hands with glee but to be fair the way those two seem to spend money it's probably more of a dire situation to be able to keep living the lifestyle that these two seem hell-bent on living. Now, not only are they talking about the money that Harry is soon to come into, they've also released stories saying that Harry is apparently very upset. He's offended because his family have cut him off just in time for his birthday. And to be fair, he's done nothing but upset them for the last five years. It could have happened at any birthday. I think he's lucky that they actually let it continue for as long as they have until they decided to say, hey, do you know what? We've, we've had enough of this now. So uh, you're definitely on your own. But of course, stories coming out like this, it's all a big build up. Harry's not 40 until September, but it's all to do with getting ready to paint the royal family in a bad light because they won't be publicly wishing him a happy birthday. Well, if they did, I would be quite shocked by that. But then Harry and Meghan don't do big public posts about other members of the royal family. Harry and Meghan have chosen to not only leave that family, but they have chosen to wage a very one-sided war against them. So I think wishing Harry happy birthday is very low down on the royal family's lists of priorities. But before we get stuck on to Harry and the reasons why I think the time has come to finally free him, we're going to talk about another prince who celebrated his birthday yesterday and he just happened to be born the spare himself. But you couldn't get two more different princes and the way that they have chosen to live their lives than Harry and then the Duke of Gloucester, Prince Richard. Yesterday, the Duke of Gloucester celebrated his 80th birthday and the Duke and Duchess are both senior working royals, although they do not get the coverage like the others do. But that doesn't mean that they do not cover lots of engagements. They attend roughly 400 engagements between them each year and they have over 200 patronages and charities between them. Yes, the snobbish royal family accepted yet another commoner to marry into the family back in 1972 when Prince Richard was allowed to marry Danish national Birgitta van Ders, a lawyer's daughter who was working as a full-time secretary. The Duke had met Birgitta when they were both studying at the same university as he was carving out a career in architecture and at the time fifth in line to the throne as Harry is now. Two of his uncles became kings. First Prince Edward who as we know abdicated for American divorcee Wallace Simpson. Then because of that we then had King George VI who was Queen Elizabeth II's father. King George VI was in fact a spare himself. Prince Richard was the youngest of two brothers. His older brother and heir to the dukedom was Prince William. Yes, there was another one. Sadly, tragedy struck mere weeks after his wedding to Birgitta when his older brother was killed in a plane crash. With him then becoming heir to the dukedom, he and his wife had to give up their lifestyle, their careers and their home in preparation for what some would call a gilded cage of becoming a working royal, where they needed to dedicate the rest of their lives to duty, to service and to honouring the Queen, the Crown and the country, which again, sadly for them, came round sooner rather than later when Prince Richard's father died only two years after his older brother. So the dukedom was then bestowed onto him and all of the responsibilities that came with that privilege. Never once has anyone ever heard a sniff of complaint from either one of them. For 50 years, they have continued to show their support and their loyalty to the queen, to now the king and to the country and of course to the crown. Yet again proving that a second son, a born spare, can in fact put duty and loyalty before themselves. Something that as we know is completely lost on Harry. 
five years on after Harry finally found freedom, we are still hearing Harry complain about the hardships that he had to endure as being a working member of the royal family. And of course, we also still hear from Meghan complaining about how hard it was for her brief number of days that she was a working royal. And it's all about to be rehashed and drip fed to us again on a daily basis because Penguin Publishers have finally decided now is the time, well, October is the time, to re-release Spare, but in the paperback version. Harry has confirmed that there will be no changes and no new additional stories. I call it that because that's all that book was, a poison pen letter, a burn book with lots of stories in it. Now, normally when a paperback is released from a bestseller, the author likes to add in additional chapters. This is something that Harry has said he's not going to do. And of course, some media outlets are saying it's Harry's olive branch to his family. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on that narrative because I think one of two things. Firstly, I believe that Harry is more than likely going to do Spare 2.0. Remember, his big contract with Penguin Publishers was for four books and he has already threatened on numerous occasions that he has enough stuff for a second volume. And the other reason why I call this absolute bullshit that he's trying any sort of peace offering towards his family is because of the dates it's being released. Harry and Penguin Publishers have decided to release the US copy on the 22nd of October and then on the 24th of October it gets released into the United Kingdom. Now the reason why these dates are so prominent is because on the 21st the King and Queen Camilla are doing their state visit to Australia and to Samoa where the King will be giving a very important speech at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. This is obviously going to be a very big and important visit for their Majesties and it almost didn't happen due to the King's ongoing cancer treatment. Whilst he has been signed off for the lengthy journey and anybody that's flown from the UK to Australia, you know that that is a hard graft. It doesn't matter if he's first class. Sure, okay, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable. But bearing in mind that the king is the age that he is and he is still undergoing cancer treatment, it is going to be quite tough. So they've already said the sort of state visit where they visit so many different additional countries across Australasia and New Zealand, he will be keeping it to the minimal. Priorities being that the king remains as stress-free and as comfortable as possible. So of course, no shock to anybody that the moment the dates are released, Harry just manages to time the release of Spare to land smack bang in the middle of this. If anybody starts screaming and shouting, it's not Harry's fault, well, we've heard that so many times, it's the publishers that have insisted on this, again, I call BS. Harry knows exactly what he's doing. Yes, okay, I was expecting more for it to hit during the time of the Earthshot Prize due to his jealousy over his brother. But I honestly think the difference is with Prince William, he's done with him, he's cut him off. Harry has got no chance of emotionally blackmailing his brother, where with his children, he can still very much emotionally blackmail the king. We know that he's told friends that have come forward that he's already said that he will down tools. He will lay down his sword if he gets what he wants. So Harry is still definitely increasing the amount of stress on his father in any which way that he knows how, because for some reason he seems to think that the king can override the Ravek decision to do with his IPP status, his security, and no doubt Harry's demands for more money. So it's very clear to me, this is no olive branch. This is just a further sign that Harry and Meghan are going to continue their attacks on his sickly father, just the same as they continue to make digs and swipes and thinly veiled threats to the queen in her final years. Now, in another report that's come out, the King is apparently horrified that Harry and Meghan's Netflix contract is about to expire. Their last lucrative deal is in fact coming to an end. And I will talk more about that in the next video that I'm doing. But as for the King being horrified, 
I don't know if that is just the media blowing up. I'm sure that the King, Prince William, the rest of the royals are very, very well aware that Harry and Meghan are trying to live their lives like successful, talented billionaires. They want the A-list lifestyle. They've got no way of bringing in that sort of income. At the moment, they are relying on the generosity of people's donations, their rich friends, and of course, as we've seen, other countries' generosities as well. So it's pretty obvious with the money drying up, then being laughed out of Hollywood, being criticised by some Hollywood big power players, their lazy contracts expiring left, right and centre, they've only ever had one surefire payout deal and that is of course trashing the royal family and putting lots of scandalous stories out there into the world for cold hard cash. It was inevitable. It was always going to happen because most of us knew the moment that Harry and Meghan even signed those big deals, I think we all knew that they were not going to rival the Obamas or the Beckhams because Harry and Meghan have got nothing of substance to them. Compared to A-listers, they have got no talents between them. They have got no skills between them either. And their lack of work ethic was really quite apparent when they were working royals and they had a team of staff doing absolutely everything for them. They didn't even have to lift a finger and yet still did next to nothing in terms of appearances and engagements. Harry doesn't know how to be anything other than a royal and Meghan just, well, she's just Meghan is the politest way I'm gonna say that. It's clearly obvious with their recent appearances that these two are still doing thinly veiled threats towards the royal family. And this is where I say, rip the band-aid off. Charles needs to tell them Bring it on. Bring on another documentary. Bring on another tell-all. Release Spare 2.0. Bring out Meghan's memoirs. Do it all. Bring it on. Because very few people are going to take a single word that they say seriously. We know that despite all of the allegations that they initially threw at the royal family, they did it because they didn't get their own way. They wanted to be half in and half out working royals. When the Queen turned around and said no, they tried to call her bluff, so she took everything from them and then voila, they appeared on Oprah's little chairs in her garden telling her about the awful things that they had to endure and suffer. If they had to endure and suffer all of the hardships that they spoke about, the trauma, the racism, the cruelty, then why on earth did they ask to have their cake and eat it and be half in half out. This is what people forget. Harry and Meghan didn't want to leave the royal family. They just wanted to be paid, to be able to cash in on commercial deals and still attend certain big, well-publicised events. It was only when they got told no did the sob stories start coming out. The fact is that Gail King and Oprah spoke of the receipts. They'd seen the receipts. Some people said we had one of Meghan's friends. I can't remember her name. I think she was in the Vampire Diaries briefly. But she was saying there are receipts. There are text messages. There are emails. Meghan has it all. There were no receipts, no evidence. And well, let's be fair with evidence. That comes a little bit of a rocky thing for Harry and Meghan, doesn't it? Because when there are court cases going on, Harry and Meghan are are quite happy to lie to everybody including judges and lawyers and as we know recently Harry is in fact trying to hide evidence in his own court case so nothing that these two ever say adds up we know that their get out clause when they get called out for lying is it may not have been what actually happened, but it's what we felt that happened. I don't need to give evidence because that's what I feel happened. So I personally think that after five years of the couple finding their freedom for a life of true independence away from the gilded cage of the royals, where Harry's relatives, if you remember, are trapped and they all needed saving, the time has come to fully free Harry. No, not from his wife. Harry and Meghan truly do deserve each other. I hope that they stay in a very long and unhappy marriage 
to each other. What I mean is, let's free Harry from the burden of being a prince of the United Kingdom and fifth in line to the throne. Now, of course, many of you will be in the comments typing as I'm saying this. Yes, it takes an act of parliament to remove the dukedom and Harry's titles of being a prince and the fact that he is fifth in line to the throne. But it is something that the king and the royal family can petition. We have seen that this can, in fact, happen in another European royal family and that was Queen Margareta. Before she stepped down she stripped her youngest son Prince Joachim of their titles. It had a knock-on effect and her grandchildren lost their prince and princess titles as well. Did they die from it? No. Did anything awful happen to any of them with regards to their jobs and their commercial deals? No. Are they still members of the same family and attend family functions together? Yes. This is where I think it would actually help Archie and Lily in the long run to have their titles taken from them, which their parents suddenly decided they were going to be a prince and princess after firstly saying that because they're biracial, the royal family were not going to allow them to have those birthrights. Then they said that they were going to allow their children to choose when they became adults. But no, they quickly decided that big, huge decision for their children without obviously asking them, despite Lily now suddenly having a voice at three years old. I honestly think it will help the children to then be private US citizens in a country that fought a war to rid themselves of the monarchy. Being a prince and a princess in California is not going to help them blend in. So with the free Harry movement that I think the king should definitely petition the government for, just think about it this way. With Harry no longer being in the line of succession, it means that his children are no longer in the line of succession as well. This will be freeing them truly of any obligations they may later feel pressured into because of their titles given to them by a racist, sexist, archaic institute, especially with such deep ties to colonialism. And what else was it? The, the Empire 2.0. So if anything, the king will be doing a massive favour for his grandchildren as well. Free and Harry from the burden of being a prince of the realm, a prince of the United Kingdom, fifth in line to the British throne, will also dramatically reduce the risks for his family, the security, it will make them less of a target. And surely Harry would want that above all else. Now, I honestly think with all of the stories that we've heard over the last five years about Harry's mental health and the trauma that was inflicted on him because he was born into the royal family and had to grow up with the spotlight on him because he was a prince, I think the king should do the right thing for his youngest son, something clearly that Harry perhaps doesn't have the courage to do himself. And he should, in fact, petition the government to, in fact, remove the burden from Harry. If Harry then is no longer, as I said, a prince and a duke, he's got no longer any ties to the crown, to the monarchy and to the British royal family outside of just being a family member, then only truly then will Harry find his freedom. The one slight snag, of course, with this, if Harry does in fact find himself relieved of the burden of being born a prince, he might find another burden that has affected his life quite immensely disappears before the ink of the king's signature is even dry on the paperwork. So guys, tell me what you think. Is it time to start the hashtag of free Harry? Do you think that free and Harry from all of his princely and royal titles and being in line to the throne will solve a problem? Or do you think that it might in fact create more? Tell me your thoughts. I will see you in the comments and I will be back soon. Take care for now. Bye.